Hello and welcome to another installment of Conquering My Collection. The first video went down really well and people seemed receptive to the idea and thought it was a pretty good idea for a series. Others fairly and perhaps rightfully critical of me for starting another series that I will not finish, but uh, one thing I should clarify is that I don't see this series, Conquering My Collection, as something that has an end goal or is a way for me to, you know, to set a goal to watch everything in my collection, that's probably never going to happen. <laughs> I need to just make peace with that. There is probably never going to be a time where I'll have seen everything in my collection unless I sell off a huge chunk of it. So, the idea of this series to kind of watch all these films I haven't seen that I already own isn't really to kind of get to the, to, to the finish line or anything like that. It's just to give me more of a kick up the ass to watch certain things. Anyway, so... Continuing on really with the trend of the first video, and might be for the next couple of videos actually, it's another Artificial Eye Blu-ray release, it's another 2018 release as far as um, when this film was released in UK cinemas, because A Fantastic Woman is a 2017 film but came out in 2018 in, UK, in the UK. A lot of these films, they get shown in festivals, and so they're called a 2017 film when they weren't really given a wide release until 2018 and the same can be said for this one and probably again the next two films I'm gonna watch uh, but this one is The Square this is a Swedish film that I heard a lot of things about when it was nominated again like a fantastic woman for the uh, the best foreign picture at the Oscars last year and what's put me off with this one is merely the the length it's two and a half hours but let's just dive in, because I usually, when I'm looking for a film to watch or something, and, you know, should I watch a film I haven't seen in my collection? I'm always looking for the 90-minute movie, and you you all should know what, what the hell I'm talking about. Surely I'm not the only one who's like, well, how long is it? But, fuck it. 151 minutes. Uh, it's a Swedish film in English, Swedish, and Danish. Uh, and I'm just going to check it out. I know there's a, an infamous sequence in it starring Terry Notary there, uh, who acts like an ape or something. And, but regardless, I don't know too much about it other than it's about the kind of modern art world, I think. So, yeah, it has a good cast. I mean, it's a Swedish film, but we have uh, Elizabeth Moss, who's very good, Dominic West, who I really like. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm intrigued to check this one out, but again, it's one of those ones where the running time kind of, kind of, kind of puts you off. I'll leave that one in for free. Uh, so, let's just stick the disc in and check this film out. It's weird hearing Swedish. It's obviously different to Norwegian, but very similar. And I haven't heard Norwegian in quite a while. Forkost? Bröd? Cornflakes? So I thought I would check in, I'm not even halfway through actually, 55 minutes into the square, almost an hour, and thought, again, I thought I'd check in with my thoughts. Sometimes I do this from time to time in movie vlogs, so why not in one of these? I'm really enjoying it. I, th I think it is pretty damn good, and I'm just intrigued to see where the hell it's going to go. We, we open the film on this museum uh, uh, curator, I suppose you could call him, uh, Christian who is, for all intents and purposes, the, the lead of the film. He isn't, uh, he wasn't billed at the beginning. Uh, let me have a look at the... Okay, right, okay, so just the beginning of the, um, the movie was like Elizabeth Moss, Dominic West, Terry Notary, all three of whom have appeared in maybe about four minutes of the, <laughs> the first hour of the film. It's all about this guy, Christian, and his attempt to uh, showcase this uh, art piece, this art exhibition called the Square, uh, which is a kind of conceptual piece. Uh, they've kind of, they kind of, it's there for people to go and view, but it's kind of, it, it seems to be building up for an actual kind of uh, exhibition uh, that will be a bit more, uh, a little bit more elaborate than what they've already got there. I mean, they've set things up. But um, they're already talking with like journalists to promote it and things like that and to, to kind of drum up some controversy 
uh, even though he feels like it doesn't need controversy, it's more about the simplicity of the piece. But really, the whole element of the square is in the background in the first hour. We're mainly following this completely, you know, you would think secondary, tertiary thread of a film in which Christian is out in the public and uh, this girl runs past screaming, bloody murder. And a uh, passerby kind of stops her to see, are you okay? You know, what's going on? She's like, he's going to kill me. And there's another guy on the other side of the square screaming. And he's running after them. And so Christian gets involved to kind of, you know, defuse the situation. And this madman runs up and he runs into them and there's this big argument and the guy d decides to go away. And so the, the situation is diffused. And Christian's like, oh, fucking hell, like, Jesus Christ, my heart's pounding. Like, could you believe that? And he's like, you know, high five the guy who, who also stepped in to help. And then as he's walking away, I'm thinking, huh, that was an interesting but random scene in the film. And then it turned out to be pivotal because he then realizes, wait, my phone and wallet are both gone. They've just pulled a big scam on me. Uh, so he goes off and he's dealing with uh, the square, the kind of the art exhibit. And then he's tracking his phone. And then him and his assistant track where the phone is, which building, but they don't know which you know apartment it's in because the, the, the Wi-Fi tracking isn't that accurate. So they come up with, with the plan to write a, a threatening letter uh, and just post it through every single apartment in the building. And they're kind of laughing about it, like, this is ridiculous, what are we doing? And then they end up doing it. And it's a brilliant moment when they're driving towards this apartment building and they put the music on and they're like yeah we're going for justice man we're doing this and they're like just almost on a high because they're going to do something that's kind of borderline you know exciting and um something they shouldn't be doing almost vigilante like even though it's very tame the, the you know posting a threatening letter through a letterbox and then they get to the actual building and suddenly they realize that neither of them want to actually go in there and do it. And his assistant, who was all like, I'll do it, I'll, I'll post it for you, I'll do all, all the doors, you know, no problem. But as soon as they get there, he's like, I'll, I'll watch the car. You know, so Christian goes into the building. I'm kind of I'm not really giving away the plot but or the film, but Christian goes into the building and then his assistant is left in the car, uh, you know, in the, it's kind of underground parking. And then some people start intimidating him. And oh my God, that whole sequence at the apartment block was so tense. Yeah, even though it's just the, the, the threat, the possibility of uh, someone opening their door, <laughs> finding Christian, posting these letters. So I, I just thought that sequence was so gripping in a really kind of almost mundane way where it just doesn't even feel like the film's properly started yet. But this whole element with the phone being missing and him trying to get it back uh, without going to the police, I suppose, uh, is, is pretty much eaten up most of the first hour of the film. And I'm totally okay with that. I just, I, I, I'm really enjoying just even the, the little moments, the little scenes of character building, moment building. I don't know, I'm just, I'm, I'm really all in on this film. But the actual background, really, the, the background feeling that the square has as far as, far as this exhibit goes, uh, we've seen some glimpses of Terry Notary on a big screen, kind of just like looking down at whoever could be standing there, uh, almost threateningly, and it's obviously part of the, the exhibit. And so, so it's, 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 it's looming, the square is looming so far, but it's not quite on the, and it's not even, it doesn't even feel like it's on the horizon yet. But it is getting closer, and I'm just wondering how it's going to reveal itself as far as the movie is concerned. So overall, really enjoying it and looking forward to getting right back into it. Alrighty, it is many, many hours since I finished watching The Square. Uh, it is currently about 1 o'clock in the morning, actually, about to go to bed. And I just hadn't sat down to film this because as soon as this film had finished, Connie got home from work and then we watched some other stuff and... I've been working on other videos, so final thoughts on the square. Um, loved it. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. I, I really thought this was a great film, and funnily enough, I was talking about how the first hour of the film had, you know, focused on this um, this plot line of where uh, Christian had had his phone stolen. And by the end of the first hour, he ends up getting his phone back. Uh, I think I mentioned that he posted notes into every apartment in the, the tower block that he traced his phone to, saying, I know you're the thief, give me back my stuff, or there'll be trouble. And so his stuff gets given back to him, uh, gets sent in a parcel to a, a local 7-Eleven. 
and he gets you know so he gets his phone back and he's like great brilliant you know he, he's on top of the world and then more trouble begins to arise and I thought it wouldn't be as simple as that because now there are people who are mad that he sent a, a letter through their door all the people who haven't you know taken his phone and so in particular there's a young boy who must be 10 years old who's really angry because his parents think that it's him and so he's getting punished he's not allowed to go out and to play and stuff so he is like fucking livid about this and he's just hounding Christian and really really wants to get some you know uh, justice and, and, and he wants him to come and tell his parents your son didn't steal anything from me but Christian doesn't comply he doesn't grant this kid this wish and I think really the whole film is about the way we treat other people and the way we treat strangers in particular and also uh, how easy it is for us to do the right thing uh, and how sometimes we just end up not doing that which may, may seem like a convoluted way to kind of sum up a theme of a film but really it's all too easy for Christian to just go to the kid and say okay I'm sorry I'll come and speak to your parents and we'll sort this out. Uh, he doesn't want to own up uh, completely to his failings. Uh, eventually he, grow he grows to learn to do that, which is kind of the point of the film, but also you know, he has a lot of self-reflection. Uh, at one point he records a video message for the young boy where he kind of voices everything, but ultimately uh, there's a bit of mystery to that, which we kind of play into in the ending of the film. If you've seen it, you know what, I, know what I'm talking about. And that's kind of, I think that the button on the end of the film is really that you should do the right thing the first time round, because uh, sometimes you might not get the chance to have a do-over. You know, it really is important to do the right thing uh, as soon as possible. And he doesn't ultimately, ultimately do the right thing. And it's about his, uh, and that is actually, I think, thrown into the way that he deals with the phone issue, uh, which then distracts him from the issue of the square, uh, where these journalists have come in to try and help promote the square by this radical viral video they want to make. And he, in his distraction to the issue with the phone, doesn't give that his full attention. And so they go off and make this highly controversial video of a young beggar child, a homeless child, getting blown up in in a square. And so now his museum is under attack from the media because of this very insensitive video. Uh, and it's something he didn't give the proper attention. And then there's also uh, a woman played by Elizabeth Moss who, I'm not even sure who she is really, but she, she's around. <laughs> and she is, uh, I guess she's a, a journalist, I guess. She, she hangs around the museum quite a bit and uh, they end up sleeping together and you know again how he deals with that and how he deals with uh, his how shall we put it he's clearly someone who sleeps around quite a bit uh, we see he has two young daughters we don't see the mother that's kind of left up to your own imagination that's fine by me you, you assume from the way the film plays out and the way we see him in scenes with women that he does, you know, play the field, and now he's confronted with this woman who, you know, after the fact is like, well, I want more, you know, what are you going to do about it? She's very challenging to him over this, and it's a, God, it's such a great scene between the two, because there's just these beats where she, you know what she wants him to say, he knows what she wants him to say, but he's not giving in, he's not saying it, and it's just such a loaded scene, and then you know, on top of all of that, they're in the museum and there's this, like, uh, one of the art installations in the background is making this noise all the time. And there's also a woman who sat there, like, kind of guarding the installation who's kind of, you know, very clearly listening to their conversation. And it's just, it's gripping stuff. And so what the director here, and his name is uh, Ruben uh, Uslund, he, and might be a really bad pronunciation there, but he really captures... Uh, interesting human interactions. You know, there's, there's just lots of scenes where I'm just, I'm really captivated by what's going on, even if it's not even advancing the plot so much. And then we have the, you know, the scene everyone talks about, which involves this guy right here, uh, Terry Notary, who, you know, is a certainly a, a, a big figure in the motion capture community, has worked on, I believe he worked on Lord of the Rings, if not the Hobbit films, and then subsequently had a role in the Planet of the Apes trilogy, the recent one. And so he's come in to kind of assume the role of an ape in this, 
you know, freeform kind of art, uh, performance art piece, basically. You have all the, the, the rich people of Stockholm coming in, all the, the kind of the art kind of people, the art crowd, they come in and sit down for a very nice dinner in this palatial kind of, you know, hall. And he comes in, and he's meant to be this, this animal. And they talk about... Um, you know, the, the animal is about to come into the room and whether he bothers you or not, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, whether he bothers you or not is up to you. If you remain perfectly still, he may not see you. Uh, if you show signs of fear, that might make you a target. Uh, if you step out of the crowd, if you make yourself known, then, you know, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll be in more danger than, than others. And it's kind of, in one sense, a, a part of how in the animal kingdom, you know, uh, the, the danger in which you are... Uh, in of an animal attacking you is all about the way you act and the way you present yourself um, I mean if you are just sat there doing nothing with, with no threatening aura about you whatsoever chances are nothing's going to happen to you uh, it's all about how challenging you are and the, the way you hold yourself and everything so in that sense it's people there and they've got this madman running around pretending to be an ape quite convincingly you know very very animalistic and primal and some people kind of just sit there and don't do anything and they don't get bothered there are some people who kind of laugh along and you know it, it's an incredible sequence like it's captivating and uncomfortable uh you can't take your eyes off the screen terry notary is, is fantastic in this role and i think they did something to his teeth which which makes him look even more kind of off uh you know where, where it's almost too believable and yeah, like it's just the the way that people in that room start to kind of almost laugh along, like okay, we 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 get this. And at one point, Christian says, "Oh, everyone, you know, give a hand for Oleg, whatever his name is, for this, you know, this this tonight's performance." And he just continues, you know, and the performance ain't over yet, you know, <laughs> and uh, and so it gets crazier. And but you can take that idea of you know being in the animal kingdom and and man versus nature and all that, but if you can also take it into a human to human element, uh, in that it's making a point about how we deal with other people uh, and how we ignore the plight of other people. And this is very prevalent in the whole film. We see lots of homeless people. There are interactions with homeless people in the film between characters as well. I'm really summing this up awfully, and I apologize. Uh, and I've got the camera way too close to my face, but I, I think it's a really cool idea, and it's not one that I'm really able to eloquently uh, summarize. But hopefully, you'll get the gist of what I'm saying in a very long-winded way. Because when Christian gets his phone stolen, it's because he intervenes into a public space of this woman who's you know terrified that a man's going to kill her. You know, if he didn't step in, then he wouldn't have gotten into that trouble, and none of the things that we saw in the film would have happened. But he, he steps in anyway, which gives us some judge of his character. And what I loved about his character was that he does do things that aren't very likable, like sleeping with this woman and then kind of essentially brushing her off afterwards, or the way he deals with a young boy who's distraught and kind of just you know shoves him away and ends up actually you know making him fall down a flight of stairs and is very kind of unsympathetic to this young kid. So there's unlikable elements to him, but at the same time you do see the parts where he is a good person, the way he shouts at his daughters and then realizes that he was in the wrong and apologizes to them, or when he does step in with that woman at the beginning of the film. Uh, but we also see him kind of ignore people who are asking for help with charity on the street and the homeless people, you know, he says, oh, no, no cash, you know, he sat there in this shopping center with all these like extravagant kind of uh, shopping bags from like boutique places and uh, the homeless beggar is there and he's like, oh, no cash, you know, you know, go away, you know, and then he needs help because he needs to go and find his daughters and so, and no one will help him. So he asks the homeless man to help him and the homeless man obliges. So, you know, it, it just, it, it, and it's also about class in that sense too, because you look into this world of the art world where, you know, this, these extravagant amounts of money are being spent on these things and 
you know, to me personally, I find things like art installations and that kind of, you know, uh, modern art to be a bit, eh. Uh, I, I wouldn't write it off completely. Um, it's just not for me, you know. And then you see the amount of money that goes into these things and it just seems a bit ridiculous, you know. And goes into that whole thing of people who have so much money that they're literally just hoarding wealth for no reason, really. And other people, like the homeless people, are kind of, uh, in a sense... Um, paying for that because there's people in the world who have money that they couldn't spend in a hundred lifetimes and they'll spend it on these frivolous things that really, you know, do they, is that really the issue? But that it goes into that and I feel like this is a film you could watch again and again and get little different things from it and it was born out of an actual art installation by the director and, and someone, I think he collaborated with someone on it, he talks about it on the Blu-ray, I watched one of the interviews, I'll definitely be watching the rest of them. So, you know, this is interesting ideas are presented in the film, and but most of all, we just have, I think, good performances um, and uh, scenes that, I don't know, there are definitely drawn out scenes which can be shown in the fact that the film's two and a half hours long. I could have watched another hour or two, which is ridiculous, but I just, I really loved uh, the feel of the film. And I don't even think it's a specific feel, like it's not like, oh, this is a, I don't know, I can't word myself right, but... I can't pinpoint one thing that I could say, oh, this is this is what really makes this film great. I, I can't. I think it has good ideas, a good theme, uh, and the way that it's made uh, was just really interesting to me. Like, I just was on board for every scene, and I just found the way... Because it takes the story, but then it just shows people being people and how they interact in certain social situations, uh, which felt so authentic and believable to me. And I thought the lead actor... Um, uh, Klaus Bang, uh, who's uh, Danish actually, and I think that that's where, yes, so it is a Swedish film set in Stockholm and most of the characters speak Swedish, he speaks Danish I believe, and then we have Elizabeth Moss and Dominic West who really is only in the film for about a few minutes really, he has an interaction with Terry Notary in the, the big sequence, but yeah, I honestly, take take out the, this scene on the front cover which everyone talks about, and I still think it's a it's a great film. You know, it, it makes you question the little choices that you make in life. Um, and, and yeah, I don't know, there's just something about it that really appealed to me. And then how the, it's just lots of things at play, lots of moving parts. I love that in a film when there's lots of things going on. They all kind of relate to each other in some way, shape or form. And ultimately you have a man who's trying to figure out how to do the right thing. Because he recognizes he's been doing the wrong things. And it's not so extreme in either direction, you know, it's not like he's making a huge gesture at the end by trying to be a better person, and it's not like he was a despicable person to begin with, and I think that's how a lot of us are, you know, and so yeah, I, I wasn't expecting this, I thought it would be a bit more arty and a bit more pretentious, I hate to say it, but it really wasn't, and... I did actually like the kind of the glimpses we got of the square, or the, the various squares and pieces of that exhibition, but ultimately that's kind of just a backdrop for this this main character and the people he interacts with so i thought it was a great film uh, as i will uh, endeavor to end all of these conquering my collection videos will i be keeping the square in my collection i absolutely will and this i think only cost me three pounds 99 in the recent hmv sale so absolute bargain uh, the transfer looked great like and you know, just, yeah, I just, I don't want to say it was shot well, because obviously it was shot well. There's not too much, in, uh, well, actually, there is one really interesting camera shot that almost made me dizzy. It's when uh, Christian and his daughters are going up a, a building, and it's one of those staircases that's, you know, um, not circular, but square. The square, in the sense that, um, you know, you walk up and around, up and around, and the camera is kind of, following through the, the big hole that goes all the way down through the building the camera is coming up as they're walking up but keeping in line with Christian the, the, in his, his path walking but spinning around the whole time in a spiral and it's this hypnotic effect by the end where when we cut to like a normal shot I had to kind of readjust my the calibration of my line of sight it was really weird so that was interesting but um, no, I don't know. I just, I just, I just love the look of it. I don't know. I don't know why, and I don't think there's anything particularly exceptional about the way it looks. I'm not even talking about the art installation. It's just the, the general. I don't know that sometimes a film just looks good without really. Yeah, what am I saying? I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But I, I thought that it was a, 
it, yeah, I have a lot of good things to say about this film, and I feel like I really could have expressed myself better. But um, yeah, it is, uh, as it says on the back, a knife-sharp satire on art, culture, and communication in the digital age. Uh, I would agree with that. It, it is a satirical, and there's a couple of really funny moments in there that that come out of you know situations where you wouldn't necessarily want to to laugh, but uh, that I find kind of fun. So there we go. And I I, I was quite struck by the the Danish actor, the lead character Christian. His English accent was like really British, and it really threw me because it was like, wow, he, he literally sounds like he's British. Uh, you know, you can tell that the the kind of the kinks in the accent here and there, but uh, that it was just like a, it really threw me when he was switching between the English and Danish. So so seemingly seamlessly. <laughs> and with that, I'll leave it. I'm sorry, this feels like it's a shambles. But thank you for watching. I might be talking about another Ruben uh, Ostlund film because uh, it says director of force majeure which i recently bought um on sale at the uh, at fop so yeah i might be looking at another artificial eye release in the near future i was already looking forward to that one um but yeah I, i'm just it's bugging me because there's something about the way this film looks i think is really nice but i just can't really put a finger on why uh i don't know it's just yeah i i it's one of those things where I'm just I'm not well equipped to um, sum up why I like certain things, but The Square was a, a big, big thumbs up for me. Great film. Thank you for watching. If you've seen it, let me know your thoughts down below. And um, there's probably even stuff I'm missing because it was such a long film and there's there's a lot going on. But yeah, that is definitely it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Hey, <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans at Carlin into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...